Tom Donoghue, you're very welcome. You've just addressed the members of the American Chamber in Dublin uh, under a number of themes, and I'd like to explore some of them with you. Uh, firstly, Ireland has been through a difficult political and economic period. From your position as the CEO and President of the US Chamber of Commerce in Washington and dealing with the boardrooms of many of your member companies, what's the perspective from the United States with regard to the attractiveness of Ireland as a destination for foreign direct investment? Well, both Ireland and the United States are going through some of the very same challenges. Unemployment, uh, uh, economic growth, and so there's a lot of uh, uh, understanding of what's going on in Ireland. But one has to look at not what people feel, but what they do. And when you look at American companies do in Ireland, it's very significant. They invest more money in Ireland than they do in China, Russia, uh, and India. And, uh, and Brazil put together. Now, why do they do that? It's an extraordinary workforce. There's a great uh, public-private commitment to jobs. They're very technically competent. There is a work ethic here that is very important. And it's the way to come to Europe and get into all the EU. And there, we invest a lot of money, and we're going to continue to invest a lot of money. And on top of all that, there's a great tax system here and a government that's committed to supporting enterprise. How important is it that there's a cohesive Eurozone for the United States economy and for U.S. businesses? Well, you know, the Eurozone is, uh, as a composite, is probably the biggest economy in the world. It's the largest export market for the United States. It's the largest export market for China. It's a very, very important uh, economic and geopolitical hub of the world. And uh, <clears throat> we hear all the talk about the expansion of China and the rest of Asia and what's going on in the Americas and Brazil and so on. And in fact, you go on the street all over Europe or all over the United States and ask the everyday man or woman, what's the biggest economy in the world? They'll tell you, oh, it's China. China is very small as an economy compared to the EU and to the United States. And it is absolutely fundamental for us to support each other and to not lose sight of the fact that the great portion of the globe's economy happens between these two great powers. You spoke passionately this morning about your ambitions for a US-EU trade pact. Uh, what are the objectives of such a pact? Oh, to create economic growth, to create jobs, and to continue to strengthen uh, the interdependence between these two great parts of the world. And yeah, I'm excited about it, <clears throat> but you have to start. I mean, everybody wants to talk, but then you have to start. Uh, we, we said originally what we should do is just take away tariffs on the trade of, of goods. And uh, that's pretty simple. But then, you know, then the people in technology and the people in finance and the people in government procurement and worrying about regulation, they all want a part of this deal. And uh, I would hope that we could do all of that, but do it one thing at a, at a time, and as soon as you get the first one done, implement it. That'll cause the others to come along a lot more quickly. Uh, what do you think the benefits to Ireland would be for the successful conclusion of such a pact? They'd get more direct investment, they'd, they'd create more jobs, they'd have more profits. And why is that? because the very same companies that invest all this money from the United States into Ireland and from other places into Ireland are going to just do more because the, the fundamentals of what kind of workers you have, what kind of corporate system you have, what kind of tax system you have, and the location you have, great place to headquarter to do the rest of your business in the EU. If you look at where we are right now in the global economy and in terms of the United States, growth, be it moderate, has returned to the United States. We're going into a general election and elections in Congress in the autumn. Uh, what is your assessment of the strengths and weaknesses of the U.S. economy now in the second quarter of 2012? It's not as strong as I'd like. I thought we were going to be, you know, in the last quarter we were 2.1 or 2 or 3 percent, depending on whose numbers you use. 
um, and I was hoping it'd be 3%. And why is it not? It's because it's a sp it stayed, in my opinion, a suspended animation. Everybody's waiting for the elections. Everybody's waiting for the Supreme Court decisions on health care and immigration. <clears throat> Companies are sitting on a lot of money, and they're waiting to find out what government's going to do, because post 9-11, Government has become far more involved in the economy than ever before. First, as, as because of necessity. And second, I think they got used to it and liked it. And we have got to get back where the primacy in job creation is the private sector. There's a debate in the United States about U.S. tax reform. What are the, are the implications for foreign direct investment, do you think? Well, of course we've got a major set of debates in the United States. First of all, what's going to happen to the Bush tax cuts, which expire at the end of the year. And second, there is a need for fundamental tax reform in the United States. We're collecting too much money now as a percentage of the economy. And so we first have to deal with our expenditures on entitlements. And then we've got to come back and take a real careful look at, uh, we're the only country, major country, that doesn't have a territorial tax. So that's why we leave so much money, you know, where we do business. Um, so we've got to get this reform. If we do the reform right, or if we do the reform badly, doesn't matter. Ireland and Europe's going to do very well. If we do it right, it's going to stimulate growth. It's going to stimulate investment. It's going to put people uh, investing more in their companies around the globe. If we do it badly, then we're going to find us taking more of our activities from the United States where it would be difficult to operate under a, a tax regime that was not productive and doing it overseas. No matter what happens, there are a lot of people who ought to worry about where investment's going to be. Ireland shouldn't because it'll always be the place that has the workers, has the system, has the access to all of the EU. Finally, Tom, uh, you've spent the last two days visiting with uh, Irish business and political leaders. What impression have they left you with as you depart? Well, I think everybody's focused on two things. They're focused on the treaty that will continue and strengthen the uh, relationships uh, throughout the Eurozone, uh, which to us is important because, is, as we just discussed, it's a massive uh, economic uh, partnership between the U.S. and the EU with Ireland as our focal point. Um, so. My, my belief here uh, is that, uh, uh, and the second point, I should say, the second point is uh, that, that we, we really are convinced, absolutely convinced, that the creation of jobs and the control of cost has got to be done the way people in Ireland are doing it. So first, they're working on the treaty, and second, everywhere you go, whether you go in the private sector, you go in the public sector, everybody's working together. We've got to put people to work. We've got to attract investment. We've got to control our costs. We've got to face up that there are a lot of people hurting and there are things we can do. It's the exact same sentiment we're trying to drive in the United States. I've been very impressed by my visit. Tom Donahue, thank you very much. Uh, listen, I'm glad to be here. We had a great day and looking forward to coming back soon.